Quick Buzz in Conversation is this is a new program we are starting because we want to have a conversation, but we're all stuck at home, right? So we found new ways of doing it. It's interesting for me too, for someone who started out with telex to be now doing programs on Zoom is fantastic, and I'm delighted we've got Dinesh Karthik with us. And I say delighted because I have. He's still a young man for me at my age. Everyone's a young man, but I've seen his journey all the time through under 19, through being an opening batsman. So many different roles you've played, uh, Dinesh. You've been you've been this young keeper batting in the middle order. You've been a specialist opening batsman on a Test tour that's one of the most memorable in India's history. You've been part of some big triumphs, but in recent times with this lockdown, apparently you've learned a new skill that I must admit surprised me a little bit. Let's take a look at this new skill you've learned. First time in my life, I've uh, I've set in my foot in the kitchen to cook, and uh, we baked a cake uh, for. Uh, a dog Coco Chanel's birthday, so uh, really excited about it. I'll know the output only tomorrow, so let's see. So you've been baking a cake. <laughs> Tell us a little more about baking uh, a cake, Dick. I mean, if you, if you had told me you'd learn to scoop a penalty stroke into the top right corner of the net, I might have believed it. You know, uh, these are hard times uh, for mankind itself, and uh, you know you got to find ways to be very positive, find ways to you know bring a smile to everyone around you. There are not too many people around me, but for whoever is around me, uh, just to you know. Uh, do things that I haven't done probably in the last 15, 20 years. Not that baking cake was at the top of my list, but these are things that makes your partner happy. And uh, you know, um, we have a small doggy called Coco, and uh, it was a birthday, so um, you know, we made this cake uh, together. To say I made this cake is a little far fetched. I helped in making the cake is is more apt, I guess. I've I've seen you change over the years. Okay, you were slightly flashy, slightly. I think the word they used for you in your early years was a bit jack in the box. You turned up everywhere. You did you did dramatic things. And now I see a stronger finisher, but a calmer person. How 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 has that come about? Is is, is it the way you approach life? Is it is it finding in Deepika someone you can share life with? Is it just looking at life differently as you get into your early mid thirties? I think meeting Abhishek uh, has made me realize that that's a journey that you can choose to go. But it has, uh, it is a bit like the share market, it goes up and down pretty fast. Or you can tend to choose a path which is far more stable, which you judge yourself. And uh, then the happiness quotient varies a lot, uh, depending on not what, uh, I mean, depending on how you compare to what you are doing, the hard work that you put in. I think that he brought me on that path. That was the most important part. I genuinely wish that uh, I had met him like, say, 10, 10 12 years ago. I, I think I would have uh, achieved maybe. Uh, a lot more, maybe, maybe not, but for sure, I would have been a happier person going through the process that I was going through, trying to always try to be the best playing for the country and probably uh, trying to be the best in the world. Because I was always trying to be the best in the world because there's somebody else before me who's achieved something and I'm trying to reach that. And that is always, I realize now that it's a hard path to choose. You'd rather try and work hard constantly and find a lot of joy in that then the whole process is different. I don't want to go into the details and go that but you know that's something that I've noticed after you know spending time with. Probably nobody in Indian cricket has seen highs and lows like you have. I guess every player does to some extent but you've seen these highs and lows so through a series of pictures DK will take you through those those key moments in your life. Uh, so here, here, here's the first one. You've just played the most unimaginable innings I'm in, in the room that I'm in now talking to you is a room I was in watching it on, on television. Uh, 34 of 12 and I said, yeah, DK is a different player from the player he was. He was a pedigreed batsman, very wristy. He's now become a powerful batsman, which was a big change that came about you. But surely 34 of 12 was, was, was beyond most people. You're going into bat, not, not in the happiest state of mind as we discover later. Are you, are you able to switch off the situation and say, let me give it everything? Or are you almost saying, look, 34 of 12, I've got nothing to lose? No, no. When I went in, uh, I definitely uh, had a plan. So, you know, this is where practice helps you. You know, I've practiced the situation over and over and over again. So, it kind of gets into auto mode as to what you need to do. That's the first thing. Going in, knowing what you need to do helps you achieve, uh, gives you a better chance to achieve what you want to do. Going there, not knowing how to go about it is obviously not going to give you the best chance. So, the probability was high in my mind. Go from outside, I'm sure it was a lot different when I hear about people talking about it. But when I went in, I believed I could go. So, you know, that sets me up into thinking, what do I need to do at this point of time? And that's when 
the programming that happens in terms of okay, I feel it's going to go here. Let me get here and look to it with this gap. That helps. You know what I mean? So that's how uh, you work around it. If you want to be consistent in finishing game, you want to be a bit of a hit and miss. Then that's it. But if you want to be consistent, then you got to think in this direction. What are you going to do? Where am I going to stand? How am I going to get it? That gap. That's all. That's how I program that whole inning, and you know, and that came about because we practice many situations like that, many one-over battles over and over and over again, with different bowlers, different wickets, different conditions in practice, and that set me up to believe that yes, I could do it on a given day. Yes, walking in, just before walking in, I was really frustrated. I mean, I was bad. I, I, I had not got out of the whole tournament. I always batted at number five, and um, suddenly I'm pushed five, six, number seven now. Why? Is it because? That guy is going to bat better than me, or because you don't trust me? Which is the which is the right answer to that? Those questions were definitely I was like I need to pull up Rohit on this post the tournament. Even though uh, you know Rohit is one of my biggest well wishers, uh, you know through the through the through uh, through time. So I was like why not why me? And then you know, you walk in, and uh, you know those thoughts don't come to you at that point of time. You immediately switches to what do I need to do to win this game? And, you know that's how the switch happened. We'll come about we'll come on that Rohit situation differently because much like you, Rohit has evolved as a person over the last seven, eight, ten years as well. But you know, you probably pick how how do you go? You you've got two or three shots that you back yourself to play, but the reaction time is so so less when the bowler's delivering. When the before the bowler delivers, you don't know what he's delivering. So how do you pick your shots in that little delivery time? In that little response time, there are two types of players actually. One is a power player. So you put the, the ranks of Dhoni and Pollard and you know, Russell into a power player. So basically, they try and some people try and take it to a stage where the bowler is under pressure, or some people start hitting from ball one. But the point here is, they don't bother about the field. They are only worried about how far they can hit it. That's it. They just want to clear the field. So the people, the the nine people standing trying to catch a ball that comes to the ground doesn't matter. They're only worried about how far I can hit. So that's a power play, and they do it probably six, seven, eight out of ten on good days. Whereas a player like me, say a Dinesh Karthik, you know, the players who are power but who are more reliant on, you know, clinically hitting the ball. Like if you take, you know, there are many players like me, and uh, for us, it is about a either finding a gap. Or be predicting what the bowler is going to do, yeah. as well as you can, and consistently for you to be consistent at that. So when you practice, you do that over and over again. And somewhere, if you've read enough, when I say read enough, like watched enough videos and know what that bowler is going to do under pressure, and taking things into consideration, the wicket, the outfield, you know where, which is the smaller side, where can I hit it, those things, then you get to a stage where you have a better chance as a touch player. And I call my 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 kind of players touch players because we. Given a chance to hit a four or a six, we choose a four because we know we have a much better chance at executing it better and the chance of getting out with far lesser. So you know we take that option. So the players like me look to beat gaps, uh, try and figure out what are the weaknesses the bowler has, where will he miss, and try and you know hit those balls. So that's how uh, touch players work. So that's how you know uh, I look at it. So when that last ball was about to be bowled, are you thinking? Maybe slow ball, maybe yorker. Those are two things people tend, people tend to, right? Slow ball, yorker, slow ball, yorker. Or is your mind completely blank, saying, "I'll try and pick the ball as early as possible. If it's here, I'll play this shot. If it's there, I'll play that shot." Yeah, I think uh, in the lead up when I went in the first six balls, it was more like, "Okay, he's going to do this. Let me do this." But the last ball, my thought was, "I'm just going to watch the ball wherever it is. I'm going to go through with that shot. That's it." And somewhere you you're hoping that he misses the length of it because he's under pressure as well. That's what right. that's what good players do when they take it deep. They wait for the other guy to make a small error, and then you try and maximize that option. That's exactly what I did. You know, bad luck to Saumya Sarkar on that day. Maybe given another day, you'd still land that docker. But you know, you know, I'm I'm fascinated by this mindset of the finisher. Is the because M S for example was a very different kind of finisher, right? He waited and he waited and he waited and he put the pressure back on the bowler and he said, when the pressure goes on the bowler, then I'm going to win. So he was he was willing to wait and back himself. As you said, Russell, he, he just goes and powers and said, look, look, I'm here. I'm fascinated with the mindset. It's like a it's like a guy taking a penalty, right? It's so they say when the guy is taking a penalty, the pressure is on the guy taking the penalty, not on the goalkeeper. So. Do you, when you are in that situation, say, "Look, the pressure is on the bowler," or do you say, "Pressure is on me," or is it just a game of pressure as much as it is a game of skill? They say diamonds are made under pressure. So you know, pressure is something that 
you need to embrace you need to be aware of it acceptant of it and that's where it starts and that's where it stops everybody knows if there is one over 14 the pressure is on both there is a great chance the bowler can make a fault and you can you know get victorious or as a batsman you can completely screw up because people have screwed up even one over six runs seven runs so you know both ways it can go and that's where the work that you put in raises your self belief over a period of time and your confidence and then when you come to that situation <clears throat> as much as you back the bowler i mean to make an error you back what you have practiced and the confidence that is giving you something i'm going to do it out that is what hard work does to you and that's why they you know the great players and all of them say just train that bit harder so when you're under pressure you believe that you worked harder than that guy and that's going to work and that's how a lot of great players work when you see you know that's when you know all those hard yards and all the hard work that they put in when nobody is watching will come into fruition at that stage when you're one on one against that guy and when you can look him in the eye and you know you work harder you know you're going to do it. there's another fascinating thing to mention about say someone like rohit sharma you're two players who've known each other for a long time you obviously rate each other and there's dynamics when everybody's under pressure isn't it so you're angry he knows you're entitled to be angry how does it work out after the end do you just go and hug each other and say look it ended well or how, how does that work out because we've never been in that situation you know in that situation actually uh, to be honest i think he was a bit uh, he felt a little bad because uh, he knew that maybe uh, i could have gone in earlier but then uh, to give him credit he felt that uh, uh, you know vijay shankar going to that stage could take on a most of the zero and if he still gets out it's fine whereas he had me still uh, at the end who could go and uh, you know uh, change the game at that stage and uh, he said that to me and you're like fine you know at the end of the day you're a captain you have your thoughts and fine totally completely accepted of it so you know it's interesting when you say uh, rohit sharma uh, because i think you know uh, when he was when he made his debut uh, i was around uh, in monday cricket and the first batsman that he ever batted was with me i remember him coming in walking in in ireland and i was standing there at the other end and there was somebody called andrew hall bowling and he asked how is he bowling i said he's bowling really hard i can't play till today he reminds me of the story saying you could have said something a little more better and made me feel fun but i said no i'm just being realistic i couldn't pick it better you know, good luck to you but you know he batted well uh, he's also you know he's uh, his career has been uh, a lot like as i again i have a bad metaphor but a bit like the share market is gone up down up down up down but the beauty about this whole thing is i think uh, during this process he's discovered himself and uh, he's realized his whole his whole batting his whole expectations has always been the fact that oh can he be a good test player can he be a good test player because in the white ball format is always you know uh, proving people that he was really good and uh, he had those questions to himself but i think at a stage which is the past 6 months or whatever i think he just let go saying you know it's okay if i'm not a great test player it's fine if it happens i'm happy it doesn't I'm, even though i've never spoken to him about it i feel this is what he done somewhere he's let go saying i'm 30 years old i've tried from the age of 19 for 11 years it hasn't happened as well as it should Maybe it's okay if I don't play Test cricket. I'll try and be the best white ball player ever played. So uh, when he's on that path, certainly good things seem to happen to him even in Test cricket. And I tell that to a lot of Tamil Nadu players as well. They're working hard. They're doing this. But sometimes it's important that you realize to let go as well. You know, it's okay. How you do it? A lot of times, situation pushes you to do it. But sometimes when you have the courage to do it, it helps a lot. Let's move to that uh, to that second picture because we we could talk about Nidhas and all the events that that's a book in itself. Now the second picture. You're, you're much younger in that picture. You're you, you're a young man. It's it's the T20 World Cup. At that point, none of us knew how big that event was going to be. When you flew in, you flew from England to uh, to Johannesburg, and you flew in from a series where you'd done really well as an opening batsman. Did did you think, you know, as it turns out, it was a giant step into the unknown. Right? Yeah. Nobody knew where you were getting into. What were the feelings going into something like that? As someone who was really that young, I mean, you were two, three years in in international cricket at that point. You had already been up and down. You had been an opening batsman on, on in a series that was so memorable for India. You and Basim Jafar put on the partnership that played such a big part. You're in a good frame of mind, and you go to South Africa was something completely unknown. Yeah. You know, you made that game in 2006, though, didn't you? You were the winning shot in that 2006 yeah, T20 yeah. game. Interestingly, I was, you know, the only T20 India had ever played before that. Virendra Sehwag was the captain. Yeah. And uh, we won the T20, and uh, you know, uh, 
the things I hate doing is talking about myself. But interestingly, I was man of the match. The first T20 that ever happened. So going into the T20, I was like, wow, uh, you know, India's only uh, T20, and I've been uh, I've been the winning run. I'm the man of the match. So I'm going to the tournament really good because. <clears throat> Previously cut and you've gone to uh, England versus India Test series. We won it, and from there, you know, we've gone to the ODI series. Uh, I started in the 11th, but then I got dropped towards end. But I got picked for the T20 World Cup. I'm going in as a second wicketkeeper. So the dynamics have changed. Sehwag is now the captain. MS Dhoni is the captain. Here is the new, uh, you know, here is the new uh, <clears throat> torch bearer for India. So where do I fit in in the things? Do I uh, do? Does he look at me as a batsman? Does he look at me as a as a backup keeper? Very interesting. We had a, a completely a new coach, uh, who you know, uh, Lal Chand Rajput. So you know, it was, it was uh, unknown territories for India. So I just go in with a blank mind uh, and I play the first game. Uh, I play, I think, at number three. T Twenty. The attitude was go hit the ball. I think it's pretty much the same then. But then go hit the ball is still for power players. I realize for now. I realize for people like me. For me, it's about go find the gaps. You know, go get yourself set, find the gaps. That should have been my goal when I think about it. Or oh, 13 years later, I'm a little late by 13 years, but I could have done that. But there and then it was go hit the ball. So you know, I went in. I was just ball was seeming and moving, and you know, I was just trying my best to hit boundaries. And that's never that's never going to be successful in my game. So I got out. I played another game after that, and I was dropped. After that, it's been a bit of a blur because at that age, you're like, oh my god, I got dropped. But You don't know whether to be really happy for the team because you're not doing well personally. But then slowly that that thought is overpowered because you you go on to win games after games and you know every game you come back there's a horde of people in South Africa. I've never experienced something like this in a different country. Every game that we win we come back. There are so many people out there. It's like wow, fabulous. Lalit Modi comes after every game announces as a bonus. I'm like wow, these are interesting times. I mean. <clears throat> Shah Rukh Khan comes for the final. So nobody's ever played a tournament like that. I think uh, you know uh, a tournament where which got so much attention in the last 10-12 years, especially following the 2007 debacle that happened in West Indies. We were like, this is a complete turnaround of sorts. And uh, I mean, uh, it just shows that you know when you sometimes uh, chart into unknown territories, uh, you could be surprised yeah, if you have the right attitude. Did you think? 2007 World Cup. There's Tendulkar, there's Ganguly, there's Kumble, there's Dravid, and now all of a sudden we are these bunch of young guys. Was it a release almost that we are now young? We can do what we want. Or was there a feeling? Oops! Now those big guys are there, man. No, I, I don't think so. I think uh, <clears throat> I think we were like a bunch of kids without the parents. Actually, I think we were little. Uh, It's the first time anyone ever called Dhoni a kid, <laughs> so I don't mind that. You're a bunch of kids. Dhoni was true, a kid. Yeah. I mean, this is yeah. 2007. Yeah, true. He was, he was three years old too. Yeah, about 26, I guess. 26 is yeah. to be a captain of the Indian cricket team. Right. 26 is uh, <clears throat> not easy. Um, and he was new to it as well. Uh, maybe he didn't. <clears throat> I always uh, thought. Through the times that he was a born leader, with just his presence and you know just his demeanor and the way he went about things, you just got the feeling that he had a lot of uh, innate leadership qualities, which he wasn't probably aware of because still then even he had to be captain of anything. He was a vice captain, quite different. Being a vice captain and being a captain are two different things. And here you were, uh, you know, the likes of Sehwag, Yumraj, and all these people have played started before you and uh, they played more than you. But then you take the captaincy and they seem to be playing under you. So the <clears throat> The undercurrents of all that, but you know he kind of settled into his role beautifully well, and um, <clears throat> I must say he, uh, I'm sure he surprised himself a lot of times. He was probably very strategic on the field, and uh, he was, he was uh, that was really helpful during that tournament. And uh, he was probably the best captain in that tournament strategically, without a doubt, and that helped win India the tournament. And that's where it started and ended because when you Get into new territories like that. Uh, you're not thinking about anything except winning the game and uh, just trying to get the best out of the individuals that you have out of the park over a period of time. And that's what sometimes, you know, corrupts you is the wrong word. Contaminates you probably. You know, there is the media to handle. There is the, you know, the small politics that happens between players and between the, you know, the, the officials. If all those things come into play, then. 
then it becomes a lot different to what it was when you started. You know, the many twists and turns that your life took. You suddenly, you popped up again in 2013 as a specialist number four batsman in, in the Champions Trophy. You had a good tournament there. Then again, you turn up in 2019 and this is a completely different Dinesh Karthik. Here's, here's, here's another picture that we've got. We've got a couple of happy pictures. This one may be a little more poignant. But you turned up as a completely different entity. You had had a couple of outstanding seasons as a finisher in, in T20 cricket. And suddenly, here is Dinesh Karthik, the finisher, being told to play that role in 50 overs cricket as opposed to playing it in 20 overs cricket. Yeah, it came as a bit of a surprise to me because they had made it very clear that I'd be batting at 7. <clears throat> but suddenly, I think that when things changed, they didn't exactly expect that something like that would happen because, you know, we were going through pretty strong in the tournament. There were many games when uh, a lot of the middle order didn't even get to bat, which was, uh, which I think was some uh, one of the hard things because a player like Dhoni likes to you know play X number of balls in a tournament, especially leading up to the semi-final. But you know, Rohit was batting so well. You always have Virat, Shikhar had done well till he left. So the middle order typically didn't get too many opportunities to bat, and uh, that I think was one of the. Hard ones, you know, because when your middle order doesn't get to bat and suddenly they're pushed into a big game like this and, uh, you know, thrust into a situation, it could be hard in that tournament. Yes, you have the experience to back you. A player like Dhoni has played 300 games for now. But uh, World Cup semi final is a World Cup semi final. It, 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 has its, uh, it has its beauty and its pressure around it. And that game, as, uh, as everybody, I think, deep down somewhere felt this could happen in a game, so happened in the semi final. You know, pick the two wickets that the whole world wanted and they got it early. So, then they obviously, you know, had to uh, kind of uh, send a rear guard action just to stem the flow of wickets. And, uh, you know, I was told to pad up. You know, everything happened in a bit of a haze, a hurry. I was just sitting in my shorts outside and I had to just go get up, get ready. And literally had… I was a little late to get in actually because I, I wasn't expecting a wicket to fall. Uh, KL got out and uh, I had to walk in. I, I hadn't even won the bats and, uh, you know, obviously, you know, through the tournament, I, it was pretty clear that I was going to bat below Dhoni at number 7 because I had done that really well uh, in, the, in the past and in the, you know, in Australia, we'd finished games, in New Zealand, we'd finished games. So, they're very clear about, I had not batted, I think, at number 3, even a 5. I had not batted, batted at number 5, maybe, I think, for a couple of years or more. I don't think so, but you know, here I got the opportunity. I went and did the job that was asked of me for the team, which is to arrest wickets. I think I went in third over and I went, I, was, I got out on the fourth team. I don't know when I got out, it doesn't matter. I just stopped those kind of wickets to fall till bold spell was over. And, uh, you know, he was the main record in chief. And, um, you know, unluckily, yeah. after that, when the time was there for me to move on, I got out. Uh, to a brilliant catch by James uh, I still love it. Was, it, 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 it was a stunning catch. I remember watching it. I was obviously at the tournament and I, I felt for you because you were suddenly playing a different role from the one we expected you to play, which is we expected you to play the T20 part of the role in what was such a strong batting order. And suddenly to come in and play as a, as a batsman, as you said, play out that spell and then and then a catch like that. Tell me, what, what happens in, in dressing rooms like this? Is there a sense of shock? Has this really happened to us? We were the team that everybody else was scared of and suddenly has this actually happened to us? Is there no tomorrow all of a sudden? How do you react to situations like those? You know, I think deep down everybody knew that the only way to beat India was to get those early wickets. And you know, the game was a bit of a uh, irritating game to say for the players because you know, you win a toss. Uh, and obviously, there is strategy around whether you want to bat or go. So, you know, we wanted to, I think, bowl. If, I, if I'm right, I think we wanted to bowl so that, you know, we could play in the evenings. And, you know, in, in England, obviously, when the sun is out, it's a lot easier to play. It's an overcast condition to start off. And so, you want to make use of all that. But, you know, these, uh, everything of that kind was lost. You know, we had to, the game, uh, you know, we had to bowl three overs the next day. It was like literally playing a two-day game. We had to come back and play the next day with a lesser crowd and, the whole uh, feel to the game was different going in, but you know we still had them to a decent score, 240. Let's say it was a good score, but if they had played, if they had put up that score on a bilateral in England, and we were playing New Zealand on the same day with a bilateral, we would have probably ended up losing two for two. That's how uh, you know it would have probably panned out. But 
World Cup semi-final, the pressure is attached to it. Um, everybody could obviously feel it, sense it, and you know that's what pressure does to you. And that's the difference between playing a multi-nation tournament and a bilateral that most people get. And that's where consistency in you know backing the players, consistency in making them feel part of it, all these kind of small small things comes into play. And we've always been good at playing these big tournaments because I think in the last few years. If semi-finals was the yardstick, I think we have hit it every time. It's just that we have not gone on to, you know, go to the final or win the World Cup. And uh, I'm sure it is around the corner with the kind of skill that we have. And, uh, you know, the pressure, uh, obviously, there's always more pressure, you know, playing for India. The, I don't think any sport is, uh, any uh, any other nation feels it as much as us because of the amount of uh, people that are there and the beliefs and the expectations that we have. But that's also the biggest plus because that's why we are uh, what we are. Having. They won't be like literally uh, you know, anywhere in India, anybody, anywhere, any place we go, all they speak about is cricket and they recognize everywhere. So there is the perks of it as well. And I think when the first two wickets fell, which was Rohit and Dhoni, I mean Rohit and Kohli, uh, there's always a bit of a uh, you know, stop to the heart because they're like, wow. I don't think it's happened much even in bilateral. It'll be very interesting to see how many times Rohit, Virat, and Shikhar all three got out in the same game within the first 60, within the first 60 runs. More so in a, in a World Cup situation, I think the world is 20 runs. I can see the change in you that, that's come along very, very different. Tell me, 20, 2013, I, I first saw a young man in a lift with a very with a beautiful young woman and you wondered, why on earth is this commentator media guy with me in the lift? Because it was the first time I saw you and Deepika together. But I, I, I sense a great sense of stability, balance in your life last few years. Yeah, I think the, the biggest advantage would be Marrying uh, somebody who's uh, a sportsman, or let's put it, somebody who's professionally very inclined, is the fact that uh, they understand the hardships of it. You know, if you're a sportsman, you understand the goods and bads of things when you fail, when you succeed. So they understand those mood swings well. And I feel it is very, very uh, nice to have somebody who's professionally very inclined and uh, a massive feminist as well, because uh, all they want is equality. They want uh, whatever they do, they expect you to, you know, share. Uh, be part of the journey and uh, you know, uh, I think uh, I've embraced it. I think, uh, you know, probably I wasn't that before but you know, obviously getting married to somebody who's achieved far, far more than me, uh, you know, in life uh, tends to, um, you know, straight away even at home, you're not that special person that people tend to think of you outside. At home, I'm a far lesser personality than him. You know. He's a Padma Shrivana, so for me, uh, it's like I'm just a normal guy at home who comes, uh, who's expected to vacuum when the isolation is on and, uh, you know, probably uh, uh, keep the kitchen a little clean. And there is no shame in that because I think she does the cooking for me and the least I could do is, you know, help her wash the apples. So, there's a bit of give and take and uh, that gives, yes, that gives balance. But more importantly, that gives perspective as well. You don't need to take what the outside world sees uh, you as a person very seriously. That's for a very limited uh, period of time and more so that is, uh, that will keep changing. Whereas what happens here uh, is pretty constant. I'll give you another little link just even though it tells you how old I am now. I did a women's cricket game many many years ago. South <laughs> Zone versus England women. And I'm pretty certain there was a lady called Susan Etichereya playing playing in that game so you've got your, your wife is sandwiched between two cricketers in a sense you know, when you ask this question i just feel um, i have more white hairs than you but clearly you're the older man i think you're a very <laughs> yeah, good guy no. you don't you have to be kind your hair really well yeah. clearly i don't find one white hair there but you're a really old man if you've seen my mother-in-law play cricket i can tell you that you saw <laughs> yeah, I a few decades ago I was I was young then, but I was still old enough. It was one of the earliest games I did actually, and uh, there, there were so many. There was there was Shanta Rangaswamy, there was Sudasha, there was Sajja <laughs> Kali, and there, there you go being yourself again, just as I called you a philosopher. Because well, now that you've done this, now that you've rocked your iPad, I must tell you of a story in 2005 before we finished. This might have been the Hilton or the Holiday in in Harare. And the team bus has just left. I was hanging around in the lobby doing nothing when this guy comes running in and says, Mr. Karthik. I said, Mr. Karthik is gone. There's the bus. You see that bus going? He said, but his kit bag is with me. <laughs> you had left your kit bag in the bus uh, before getting onto the bus. So, I, I mean, this is just a story from 2005. But uh, 
I mean, you you look back, you've had a career that's up, that's down, but life's generally been very kind to you. You you've got a lovely. No, life. yeah, you've done well. I think I've had a fabulous career, Tila. I'm very very happy with the way things panned out. Uh, as I said, because the benchmark has been somebody else, they compare me and then they feel that oh, he's achieved far lesser. For me, I think uh, from what I was, somebody who was highly inconsistent as, and flashy and flamboyant as a player, to somebody who could be trusted to say that you know what they were the goods wherever he plays. I think that has been uh, the biggest uh, satisfaction for me, and uh, I have no regrets. I have I'm absolute. I think one of the strengths I feel, as I said, is the fact that I have a bad memory. So probably I don't remember too many things, but I'm also very very grateful. There's, I mean, if you look at it from a very holistic point of view. Even right now, in India, after I think I've been playing this sport, I mean, for about 25 years now, and 15 years of first-class cricket, still to be the to be in the top 20, 25 cricketers, and still hold the chance of playing the World Cup that's round the corner. I'm very proud of myself. There's nothing for me to be sad about. I mean, how many people can boast of a career for so long and you know have so many good things? I'm I'm an extremely could I have done better? The answer is always yes. Am I happy with what I have done? The answer is again going to be always yes. So for me, it's it's not a question of uh, oh somebody's done better or somebody's done worse. I have done this much, and I think from what I was to what I am, I'm extremely happy with myself. Because I think at the end of it, after doing so much, if you're not happy, then you always have this cussed feeling and this you know a little bit of frustration that you know this guy did that to me, that guy did that to me. But nobody's done anything. Whatever you've done is. Something that is in your hand. Either you've done it well, or you've not done it well. That's all. Some some selector comes and picks you. He's not going to pick you or not pick you because of you as a person. Because what you've done on the field. If you accept it, that's why you know. Maybe I'm sounding a little too philosophical, but you know, a lot of times people get angry with commentators and you know, comment media people and just the smallest and frivolous of things. I'm sure a lot of these people who are playing right now will all be in their shoes someday, and then they'll realize that. The question is not; they're not doubting you as the person. They're doubting what you can, your credentials as a player, as a batsman, as a keeper, as a fielder. That's always fine. That's always up for debate. And if that is not up for debate, that means you're sitting in your house somewhere and nobody's bothered about it. So, you, know, you need to look at it that way. Is what I've always felt, and I'm always uh, completely okay with it when, however things go. And as I said, uh, I don't want to elaborate too much on it, but I'm happy where I am today. I'm going to ask you nine questions. <clears throat> Quick answer, and then we'll we'll let you go because we're getting to be time for lunch. Have you ever done cricket commentary on any one of your innings? On my inning? No. On others' innings, you have. I've done cricket commentary for a game. They called me for T N P L one game. I went and did it. But never on one of your innings. You've not looked at your own performance and say, right? You know, all these all these stupid commentators. This are, I would have described my own innings. I've never been so fascinated with myself. To be very honest, I've been very critical of me. Have you ever done a Google search of your own name? I do have done it for sure, for sure. You're right. I did it. I did it before this call to find out when I was married. I got it wrong. I told you. I said 2016. <laughs> it is 2015. So yeah, I've done it. Just that when you're in love, you don't remember these things, right? So I'll, I'll so give you a little bit more there. I'll use that line. Have you ever been scolded by a senior cricketer? So many people. I think I'm. I was that kind of character where people loved me, but they also gave me a go because they found that oh, this guy is so talented, but he's not doing the right things. So you know, I've I've, I've had it. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you cried at a cricket match? Oh yeah, yeah. Very definitely. I remember getting out one game. And I sat down and cried for, till lunch. I've done it. Yeah. Sledged an umpire. Oh, That's yeah. what I'm interested in knowing. You did? Oh, I, I was uh, I was a bit of a bully. I mean, I used to I used to go play international cricket, come back with a chip on my shoulders, and go after these umpires like anything. And, uh, last five years, I've completely stopped it, and uh, it's been good from there. And I've got a lot of respect for the umpires. But uh, you know, uh, uh, before that, I was a bit of a nasty guy. I guess uh, I wasn't the umpire's favorite, so to say. Now I think uh, they've changed their opinions on me. No, oh, you were not nasty. Well, I promise you. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> maybe it's hard to believe right now, but yeah, I've been a little nasty. Not, I have abused them, but I've thrown my helmets and done all these kind of young stuff, which looks good. I felt, but then realized that it's absolutely. Okay, I've got three. Have you ever claimed a bump catch? No, no, no. I've never claimed a bump catch, 
but i've claimed the catch and they've said it pump so you know i just thought uh, are you the kind of are you the kind who plays pranks on teammates played a big prank on a teammate or have you been the subject most of the time have i played a prank on a teammate yeah, yeah a few times a few times definitely a bowling action you would imitate i used to imitate venkatapati raju really well left handed yeah 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 okay i i can still can i can do a decent imitation you know i'll show it to you okay i used to imitate bs chandrasekhar by the way i don't know how many hours i spent imitating bs chandrasekhar bs chandrasekhar is a hard action to imitate it is and i didn't tell you i got it right i just tried yeah <laughs> okay that's okay last one honest last one because you're talking to one have you have you ever confronted a commentator or a journalist saying how dare you say this no never 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 never, never. i've heard uh, uh, you know when they start talking a little negative about me or something like that i generally mute the sound and then wait for that thing to pass and then i go on but you know, these days social media is so beautiful they make sure you know what anybody talks about you so here and there i get bits and pieces but it uh, it affects me for maybe 2 minutes 3 minutes beyond whatever i see and hear but after that i'm like better things to life and you know and it's totally okay to have an opinion it's okay i in fact i've always said this if nobody talks about it in this they're not doing really well in life and it was great great catching up with you dikai uh, i hope this I mean I know cricket is a very small thing given all that we are going through at the moment and you wish that this thing never happens again but I hope it goes away quickly because I want to watch you bat again I don't know whether I'll, whether it's in purple or in blue but I'd love to watch you go out there and finish again like with Morgan on one side Russell on the other would be fantastic and a blue shirt would be even better Thank you so much thanks Take care. great talking to you Take care. thanks Thanks